I'm Tim, and it's time to help you choose what's on your table this weekend. Hey everybody, so election fever is still in the air. There's a lot of people still talking about politics uh, with the U.S. election just behind us. So for this week's episode of What's on Your Table this weekend, we're going to focus on American political games in my top five. First one, we're going to get started with 1960, The Making of the President. Now this game is my very first American political game, and I remember putting it on hold at Revolution Games in Calgary and being so excited to go get it, but it's a two-player game. It takes, on the box it says 90 to 120 minutes. Um, I generally find it's more 90 to 105. We're usually finished in an hour and 45 minutes. The story of this game is one of you takes on the role of JFK, and the other one takes on the role of Richard Nixon, and you campaign against each other, just like in the 1960 election, and you see who comes out on top. You can campaign on the ground in various states, you can campaign through the media, or there's even a debate uh, around where you can debate one another and see who comes out on top. The main mechanics in this game are um, action and event cards, area influence majorities, uh, we have some battle card mechanisms, and as well some hand management. Uh, this game is really, really good if you are somebody who's ever wanted to know what it feels like to manage a national presidential campaign. Um, it does a really good job of immersing you in the story where you believe that you are managing a presidential campaign. Now, those of you who have actually been involved in that stuff would probably tell me it's not quite like this, but you feel like you're there, and that's what a great game does. Um, it's also really aesthetically pleasing. Um, all the graphics look great, and there's been a reprint of it in the past few years, and it's come out even more beautiful. Um, and the other thing is that if you really like history and you want to learn about history, this is a great game uh, for you because each card has a little snippet of something that actually happened on the campaign trail, and it talks about it. I learned so much from this game about the 1960 election that nobody else would ever know. So, really recommend it. Great two-player game. Second game is on the top 10 list of almost every um, list that there is that talks about top 10 board games there are right now, and that is Twilight Struggle. So Twilight Struggle is a two-player game. Um, it's listed as taking about three hours. I generally find it's three to four hours, even a little bit more. Uh, it is definitely an epic game. Um, but in this game, one of you is going to be the United States, and the other person is going to be the Soviet Union. And you're going to reenact the Cold War uh, from 1945 to 1989. Uh, and you're going to do that by trying to exert your influence into different countries, just as they did during the Cold War, uh, via soft influence or trying to stage coup d'etats. You can even go and try to win the space race uh, in this game. But it is an epic game. Um, it's one that, that definitely deserves to be in the top of many lists where it is found. Uh, the um, sorry, The mechanisms in this game... You have action and event again, you have some hand management, you have dice rolling, and you have tug of war and area influence and majority again, a lot like 1960. I would tell you this, you will love this game if, obviously if you love history, like 1960 a lot of the cards do describe what actually happened in the space race. If you like epically long games, you're going to love this game, games that you can just pour over for hours at a time and just love doing it. You're going to really enjoy this. If you like games with really tough decisions, this is the one for you. I mean, every good game is a series of tough decisions, but this one is specifically hard because you just never really know what your opponent might be thinking of doing next. And so you have ideas, you have general thoughts about what might happen, and you know what might come up in the deck, but there's no way of really fully knowing what might come out of your opponent's sleeve. So it's really good if you like those types of tough decisions. One question I do get about this game is whether or not it's uh, balanced to one side versus the other. Um, and I, one of the things I've heard and I do kind of find is that early on in the game, there's maybe a little bit of an advantage to whoever's playing the USSR. Later on in the game, there's probably a little bit of an advantage to whoever's playing the United States. Um, so look out for that. But you know what? I recommend this game. If you have time for a three or four hour game, this game will not disappoint you.
one is 13 days. So 13 days is based on the Cuban Missile Crisis, which was during the Cold War. Um, there was 13 days um, when the world was on its toes, uh, waiting to see what would happen next. There was lots of tension. And this game recreates that. It's a two-player game. It's listed as taking about 45 minutes. I generally find we can get it done in 30. Um, but yeah, in this game, kind of similar to Twilight Struggle in that one player is going to take control of the USA, another player is going to take control of the Soviets, or the USSR, and you're going to try to come out of the Cuban Missile Crisis after the 13 days with the most prestige. Um, you basically want to keep your reputation intact. That's what the Cold War was all about. The mechanisms in this game are action and event cards, area majority and influence control, we have battle cards again, hand management, and tug of war. Now you are going to like this game if you want a, uh, an experience similar to Twilight Struggle, but more compact and shorter. I mean, it's shorter both in time, it's more compact in design and play as well. Um, obviously, like any other game in the series, if you love history, you're going to love this game. But one thing, if you really like games that involve bluffing, uh, this game is going to be up your alley. Because um, in every round, each player has a different agenda, and you bluff as to which one it might be, and it keeps you on your toes because you only have four turns per round um, and three different potential bluffing possibilities, so you have to make quick decisions. I really enjoy this game if I want to feel the tension of Twilight Struggle, but in less time. game is Founding Fathers. Um, so this is a three to five player game and the box says it takes about one to two hours but every time we've played it it's like clockwork. We're always between an hour and 10 minutes and an hour and 15 minutes. So I'm going to say 75 minutes tops especially if you're playing with a group that knows the game already. Now in this game each player takes on the role of one of the founding fathers of the Constitution aptly named game and you're at the convention hall in Philadelphia um, debating with all the delegates as to how the Constitution is going to take hold or how it's going to look in the 1700s. The goal of this game is to, as one of the founding fathers, use your influence to get the delegates at the convention to vote in certain ways on the articles of the Constitution. Now you can do that by having them vote in the assembly room, control a, com uh, a committee room, or speak in debate in favor of certain ideas that are going to show up in the Constitution. Now the mechanics in this game are area, majority, and influence. Again, we have hand management, we have card drafting, and we have set collection and voting. I really, really recommend this game if you want a, a political style game, but you've got a bigger group and you want something that's more social than some of the other ones. Um, some of the other ones can get deep in the thinking. This is a very social game. Lots of talking, lots of flip-flopping, lots of reversing. I also recommend this, obviously, if you like history. But uh, with the musical Hamilton being so popular lately, if you're a fan of that musical, you're likely going to enjoy this game because there is a lot of things in this game uh, that involve uh, Alexander Hamilton and what he was involved in when he really lived. The rule book has a really cool back of it as well. It tells you all about the delegates and each of them, what their contributions to the Constitution was. So if you like to learn, there's a lot there. Solid game for a social crowd, especially if it's a social crowd that likes uh, history and politics. Um, and a great social voting game. We really enjoy it. Okay, so our last uh, game this episode is also the most recently released, Watergate. Uh, Watergate was released last year. Um, it is a two-player duel style game. It actually was awarded the Golden Geek last year for the best two-player game released in 2019. Now the box says it takes about 30 to 60 minutes, 
but we generally find 25 minutes is the norm with this game. Sometimes 40 minutes if the cards are coming out a certain way and interacting with each other where there's a lot of cancelling of each other out. Now in this game, one player is going to take the role of the Nixon administration and the other player is going to take the role of a newspaper editor. The newspaper editor is trying to connect two informants uh, on the Watergate scandal to the Nixon administration. Meanwhile, the Nixon administration is going to try to snuff out evidence and run out the clock on their term so they can earn another term before they get caught in the scandal. Now, this game uses action and events as a mechanism, connections, hand management, and it's definitely a tug-of-war style game. I would recommend this game for different types of people. If you are a big fan of those dual style games, a two-player game that's going to be, you know, not too hard to get into and play, and you like duels, you're going to love this game. It is one of my favorite duel games that I've ever played. On that note, if you're looking for a game that not everybody has to really be into history or politics to enjoy, this is a great one. I have played with people that couldn't care less about history uh, and know nothing about Watergate, and they have loved this game. So if you've got somebody in your gamers group that maybe one person is into history, the other person isn't, this is great. If no people are into history, this is great. If both people are into history, this is great. The bottom line is you don't have to like history to like this game. The last reason why I'd recommend this game is because it's a great kind of filler style game to either begin or end your night. Either way, I promise you're not going to be disappointed with Watergate. Well, that sums it up for this week's episode of What's on Your Table this week, and I hope you enjoyed learning about these American political games as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. Why don't you comment below and tell us if you've had any experience with these games or what you find with them. Or maybe even just comment and tell us what's on your table this weekend. Until next week, I'm Tim, signing off. Happy gaming.